Shall I and welcome. Today we're going to be working on the M5 Stack 1.21 Blitz. Um, so that's a, a, a full node version. So this little device here connects to my uh, Blitz. Um, it requests an invoice and then displays the invoice. You can pay the invoice and it'll turn that little relay on that. This is based on a similar project I did in San Francisco for Open Node. So this just connects to the Open Node API and then displays an invoice. You can pay it. And in the San Francisco conference, we have these attached to arcade machines and it address for a credit so you can play on the arcade machine. But as you can see, this is the internals of one of those things and it's, it's lots of wires, it's a bit messy, um, a bit hacky. So a lot of fun to make, but um, uh, this is a nice simple version of that. It comes, you know, obviously you can buy an M5 stack and it's sort of got a nice uh, form factor to it. It's got a little screen. This is the SP32 based. Um, and then there's just a little relay as well, which you need to, to plug into it there. So anything you turn on for a period of time, you can pretty much use this unit um, and then have it accept Bitcoin. So I'm going to scan that QR code there. Okay, and then I'm going to hit pay. 200 Satoshis on Lightning. And there we go, it turns on my Jacob's Ladder. So 4,000 volts of uh, lightning fun right there. A little bit dangerous, but there we are. I'm also going to do another tutorial of this project, which will be using the open node service. But for this first one, I thought we'd use um, a full node implementation and connect it to an actual uh, uh, Raspberry Blitz. As always, the M5 Stack 1.21 project is in the Arc BTC um, GitHub. As I said, we're going to be using a Blitz, so we're going to be using the LND full node version of it. There is also an open node version, which I'm going to do in the next tutorial, and that's an even simpler version of this project. We just use the um, open node API, uh, but in this version, we're going to be using um, our LND uh, full node, uh, which we built using the Raspberry Blitz project. So in the GitHub, we have um, details on how to put the hardware together. And then also where to buy the hardware from. Um, the uh, cheapest and uh, best resource I found is uh, AliExpress. You get them for about thirty dollars. Um, the great thing about the M5 stack is you can uh, add additional uh, modules and things to it really easily, um, which we're going to be exploring actually in a, a few tutorials away. Um, there's also a link to the type of relay you, I've used. So I've used the the five volt relay, which the uh, M5 stack can easily turn on. So one, when it sends a high to to the pin on the relay. Um, it physically switches a mechanical switch inside the relay, which allows your circuit it's connected to to turn on. Um, so it's like a switch in your circuit. Um, uh, in the in my Jacob's Ladder implementation here, I'm using 24 volts on that switch, uh, which I don't know if that's sustainable if it were turned on for long periods of time, but it seems to work for short periods of time. You can get relays for pretty much anything you would want to do. Um, so you could even have your M5 stack connected to, say, uh, a, a 230 volt light bulb and, and have it turn on a, a light bulb on your on your mains at home. Obviously, be very careful when you're dealing with the high voltage stuff. Uh, so anything you turn on for a period of time, you can use this M5 stack 1.21 project. Um, so if we have a little look at the code here, what you'll need to do is you'll download the project and then copy um, the, the, the Blitz folder into your um, sketchbook. So when you install your Arduino IDE, there'll be a sketchbook somewhere on your computer um, where you can install it. If this is your first time using the Arduino IDE, just Google how to install Arduino IDE on your relative uh, operating system. Uh, go to their website. They've got um, implementation. They've got uh, software for Windows, Mac, and, and Linux. Um, Yes, that's pretty much it. So copy that into your sketchbook, then open up the, 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 the file. It will open the um, uh, the file in your Arduino ID. It'll probably look a little bit different to this because I took the time to, to style it so it's a little bit easier on the eye because it's usually got a white background. Um, that was a bit faffy though, so I, would, I wouldn't recommend bothering trying to do that. But if you really want to, you can YouTube that as well. Um, so we've got two files which we're going to be, uh, or two files in, uh, here we are. So we've got two files here. We've got the uh, main code file and then we've got an image file as well which is in a C array so our Arduino IDs has opened that up in two separate tabs here the first thing you need to do is make sure the libraries are installed so the libraries we're going to be installing are M5 stack Arduino JSON and little VGL so little VGL handles the image the C array image M5 stack is obviously handling our handling our M5 stack Arduino JSON when we make a request to our blitz it sends back a JSON format to data so we can pass through that data and then get the information we need. You can install all of those from the uh, 
library uh, the manage the library manager um, so if we search LVGL there we are you can install that and the other one you need to install is M5 stack um, this one here M5 stack by M5 stack and then what was the other one? Oh yeah Arduino Jason there we are Arduino Jason by Benoit um, so install those three libraries you'll also because the M5 stack is based on the SP32 which we love you'll also need to install those boards um, and then included in those boards is the Wi-Fi client secure library um, so now I've installed that on for my board manager I've got my Arduino boards but then I've also got additional the SP32 boards here it's a very simple process to do if you go to the um, Google like Express if the SP32 install Arduino IDE and then you should get a link a couple of links down you should get the a link to the github and then if you go to the expressive uh, yeah so in the expressive github here if we click on installation instructions um, we can just use the boards manager which is just a process of like copying this link into uh, your preferences in the boards manager and then that will automatically install the board so it's really quite simple there's loads of YouTube tutorials and things explain how to do this so yeah just just google it you'll figure it out um, we're connecting to our full node our LND node so I'm assuming you've got a full LND node set up um, we've got a uh, because I use this with the Room 77 node, they've got a URL. If you're on a local area network, you could just use the IP address. It's um, an SSL uh, connection, so we're using port 443 for that, which is the standard. And then for the actual REST API of LND, their standard connection port to connect to is 8080. You need to include your read macro and invoice macro room, which you can get from the LND node. Access your LND node from Firefox, um, and then you should be able to, uh, if you click on the little security lock thing, you should be able to export your um, certificate, uh, your uh, yeah, your your uh, certificate for the for, for accessing the uh, website. Sorry, the the server. Um, you'll need to format it in this specific format for um, uh, Wi-Fi client secure, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, um, as you'll see when you download it, but. Uh, it'll take you like five, ten minutes, you know, um, uh, but it needs to be done. Uh, okay, then we've got a couple of variables. So the invoice amount, so we're going for 200 Satoshis, and then there's a couple of other variables we'll look at in a minute. Now, in any project in Arduino um, ID, in the Arduino, you've got a setup function, and then you've got a main loop, which just loops around. So in our setup function, first thing we do is we turn on the M5 stack, then we um, run our blitz splash screen. So this is just a little splash screen for when you turn on the stack. Looks quite nice. Um, I'll do a separate tutorial on how to generate an image because it's a bit fiddly. Uh, um, so I wouldn't even bother until I release that tutorial because you just waste hours of your time trying to figure it out just like I did. Um, and then ooh, um, once it's done that, it connects to the Wi-Fi using your Wi-Fi credentials, which you set up here. Uh, and then it says pin 21 needs to be an output pin so where are we um, when you connect your hardware uh, there's only three jump wires you need to connect and one is to the green wire is I don't, know, I don't think I've actually got a picture of the underneath of the with the labels on the M5 stack but there we are uh, so the green wire here this is a three volt wire that's a ground wire and then that's connected to pin 21, which is labeled as SDA on the actual um, M5 stack. You'll figure that out. When uh, pin 21 uh, sends a high, it turns on the little relay. And then when it sends a low, it turns off the little relay. And then you connect your circuit to um, uh, these two uh, um, connectors here. And then that's, you know, will open or close depending on whether you send a high or a low down that little red wire. Um, so we're just saying, we're just telling the SP32 that pin 21 is going to be used as an output. Now, what do we do? So we've got our main loop here. Um, and then under the main loop, we've got our get and post requests. So there's three well, in functions. Um, uh, first one is a post request, which is actually requesting the invoice. The second one is uh, get hash, which is, I think this is get request, I guess. Yeah, it's a get request. Um, and that's to actually get the hash of the invoice um of the payment and then the third one is to check whether to see if that payment's been paid uh and it is a bit annoying like you can't um when you request an invoice uh in order to check to see if that invoice has been paid first you need to query and get the actual hash for that invoice and then you check using the hash so it's 
I don't know why they just don't give you the hash when you request the invoice personally, but uh, but yeah, but that was obviously a decision made for a, for a reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, there's also a little function down here for actually displaying our invoice as a QR code as well, hidden down there. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing we do is we request the invoice. Uh, the invoice amount there, that's that variable we set. Um, I won't go into too much detail about how this function works because uh, you don't really need to know. Um, it just, so as I said, these are post and get requests. Uh, when you when you use a browser on your computer, that's doing getting post requests to websites. Uh, but you, you just obviously don't see the back end of it with an ESP32 and with this kind of level of, of developing, then you need to um, set the back end yourself. So you set like headers, um, we're, we're attaching our invoice macaroon to give us permission to access the, um, uh, the endpoint on the API, which is the invoices endpoint. If you want to look into the different endpoints and what they do in more detail, uh, you can go to the LND um, REST API. So this is the, the, ver the invoices endpoint. Uh, and that's where we actually request the invoice and it generates the invoice for us, which we can check. Uh, then it sends back the data and then from that data we're able to get the, um, you know, the, the, the invoice. Um, and then this weird little byte thing. So this is something we use to get the, 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 the hash, but it's not actually the hash itself, which as I said, a bit annoying. Um, yeah, so once it's, once it's done that, so we've requested an invoice, we've got the invoice back, we display the invoice as a QR code, so that just, M5 has a really nice little li in included library function, which just um, uh, turns that data in into a QR code for us and displays it on the M5 stack, which is nice and easy. Then we have to go and get the hash thing, and then we need to check to see if the, the payment has been paid. Uh, we make a while loop. So first we set this integer to zero and then we say while well, the integer is into a thousand then run this while loop um, and then it just keeps checking, you know, is the variable settle false? So in our function, bleh, check payment, uh, well, the, the, the variable it returns is settled and that's a boolean. So it's either true or false. It's only two options. Um, if it's false, it just checks the payment again, waits a little while, adds one onto the counter and then keeps looping around. Um, and then, so eventually it would time out and then just run the whole um, uh, 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 function, it's, you know, the main function. Um, but if it is paid, then it goes to else. So settle is true. Uh, so, um, and then it displays the splash image, the same thing we display when we first turn the thing on. It sets pin 21 to high, so it turns on our relay. For me, because I'm doing the Jacob's Ladder, I turn the uh, turn it on for 15 seconds because I want you know to see lots of arcs. If you're when I did it for the um, uh, a similar project for the uh, reg turning on our cre uh, registering credits on arcade machines, I set that to like 200 milliseconds. If you were using it, say in like a vending machine to turn on a little motor, then you would change that time depending on how long you need, need the little motor to turn on to spit out the, the product. So yeah, that, that's entirely dependent upon your project. Um, once it's done that, it sets counter to a thousand, which means that that breaks the while loop and then it loops around again. Uh, so pretty simple stuff. Once you've done that, um, you just plug in your M5 stack, hit upload, it will upload it. Um, all being well, it should then display the QR code. So here's my little M5 stack here. Loaded the code onto it. I'm at a safe enough distance from the Jacob's Ladder. Come on, scan. There we are. Scanned. Let me click on pay. I've plugged it in. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> Makes me jump every time. Look at that. Wow, brilliant. And as I said, you can you can really attach that to anything. Anything which you pay to turn something on for a period of time. It could be um, a, a motor inside a vending machine, for example, and you could have one of these on the outside of the vending machine and people could pay and then receive an item from the vending machine. So super cool project, super simple as well. Uh, so thanks for watching. The next tutorial will be the open node version of this, which is even simpler because you don't need a full node. Um, so you don't need back runes or anything like that, it's just an API key. Um, so yeah, check that one out as well. Have fun hacking and uh, I'll see you on the next uh, tutorial.